you're thinking about going portable with your ham radio, then one of the things that you need to consider is what you're going to use to power it. And I've got a couple of ideas here, some of the things that I use when I run Poda, when I run Soda, and when I'm also camping. Doing all these things requires different power uh, levels or different amounts of power storage. That's probably a good word that I should use. So I've got some different things here that I wanted to show off and some of the things that I use with my portable amateur radio operations. So the first thing that I wanted to start off with here is this PowerTech battery from JCAR Electronics here in Australia. A little seven amp hour, 12 volt lithium ion, uh, sorry, LiPo4 uh, deep cycle battery. Now, this little thing is very light. It's not like the old seal lead acid batteries where they would be quite heavy. So it is great for being able to pack in your backpack when you're going uh, on a soda operation. And for this particular battery, I use this with my IC705. So I use that for my soda operations and I carry this with me when I wanna run 10 watts. So I've got the internal battery in the 705, but if I wanna run a little bit more power, get the 10 watts out of the 705 or run it for a little bit longer, that's when I bring this with me. So very lightweight. I've got here on the top some Anderson power pole connectors, which I use to connect into my 705. Now this is just one brand. You can get many different brands. There's lots on Amazon, there's lots on eBay. This is the brand that we have here, or one of the brands that we have here in Australia, JCAR. And I'll put some links below if you're interested in any of these and you want to um, pick up one yourself. So that's what I use for SOTA predominantly. I run my ICOM IC7300. That's my main radio for POTA. So 100 watts, a little bit more current draw. So I can't use the small little battery because this will only do seven amp hours. It'll run it flat, um, even if I, re I could reduce the power on the 7300, but if I want to run more power and get my full 100 watts, that's where I've got this little battery. This is a, uh, a Wallaby. Now, this brand, I've had a lot of people ask me where you can get this battery from. You used to be able to get it on eBay, and I haven't seen them in stock for a long time. That said, I'll see if I can find a link and there will be one below to keep an eye on if they ever do come back into stock. But you can get these with different brands. Um, uh, PowerTech, they make a 50 amp hour version. But the Wallaby battery I liked about this, this was a 30 amp hour LiPo4 battery. So a little bit less capacity, but a little bit smaller. And it had this carry handle, um, not a lot of weight. Again, when you're running Poda, you don't need an awful lot of uh, you know, weight's not all that much of an issue, but still it helps them carrying a big massive battery around. So this enables me to do my POTA operations for several hours if I really want to on single sideband. If I was doing digital, probably um, I would use a little bit more power, but I've never run out of juice using this. And um, this is my main battery that I use for a lot of my portable operations with the POTA stuff. I also use this for uh, operating some of my transverters uh, for my microwave operations. If you've ever seen those videos before, I use this battery as well on occasion. Now, before I get into some more of the other stuff that I've got here that I'm gonna show off, I just wanted to show this. This is a uh, Anderson power pole distribution. This is actually comes as a kit from a club in New South Wales here in VK, uh, VK2. And they offer this, you can put this together. Um, the, I think it's the Waverley Amateur Radio Club. I'll put a link below if you wanna get one of these kits. They're pretty cool. They've got these blade fuses in them. They've got a um, voltage display here and you can put your different fuse ratings in here and Anderson power poles and it's just a, a cheap distribution block that you can put together. You can buy these Rig Runner. They have a lot of distribution, uh, Anderson power pole distributions. You can get these off Amazon and all sorts of different places, probably AliExpress as well. Um, but uh, essential if you're running a lot of pieces of equipment. So I run quite a few uh, different pieces of equipment. So I've got all of these various leads and stuff that I run these on. Now, not only that with power poles, these have started to uh, appear all over the place. This is, if it's gonna focus, there we go. 
This is a Wago to Anderson power pole adapter. Now, someone actually made this up for me and sent this to me. These have become really popular because you can use your bare end wires for whatever you know connector or temporary connector that you've got. You can put that into the Wago end, snap those on, and you've got yourself a lead to power pole. There is a couple of videos that a few of my friends have done. I think Kyle AA0Z's done a video. Having a couple of these in your kit's really handy, especially if you've just got some you know, random leads and bare ends that you want to power. Moving on now to the big boy. Oh, this is a little bit heavier. Now this is my 100 amp hour Wallaby battery. I got this again before they went out of stock. This comes with a voltage display in the top here. And I've actually got a battery box that this is going to go into. This battery box here has Anderson, the large gray Anderson power poles here on the top. Uh, it's also got a cigarette lighter there for running all of your 12 volt automotive stuff. Um, and also some large lugs on the front too if you wanna be powering some other things. I haven't put the battery into that box yet, but I do use this battery on my field days for a little bit longer operation. So the 30 amp hour version there for POTA when I'm out for a little while, an hour or two is fine. But if I'm running all day or for an extended period of time, or I need a lot of current, then I run the 100 amp hour version. And this runs very, very, uh, is very well for field day. As I said, a little bit heavier, but it's for most of the time when I'm running uh, for a, a long time and, and weight's not really too much of a consideration. Usually if I'm running from the car, a lot of the times I'll be running microwave um, as well. So I might go and do a VHF, UHF field day, set up my microwave gear and everything runs off of this. This will run stuff pretty much all day for hours. Heaps of storage, heaps of capacity. You've got the voltage in the top. You can get other brands as well that are similar. LiPo 4.2 lasts a lot longer than sealed lead acid as well. A lot lighter than sealed lead acid and you get a sustained amount of power for a lot longer than sealed lead acid. So uh, that's why I've got those there, my three main batteries. Now, I charge those with a proper charger for charging LiPo 4 and um, lithium ion batteries. So I use a Victron, this is a blue smart charger. It's only a five amp one, you can get these in uh, higher capacities. This charges the seven and the 30 pretty quickly. The 100 takes a lot longer, but it's not really too much of a problem. I'm not really in too much of a rush to charge it. Although, yeah, as I said, you can get the larger versions. And the Victron stuff's really good because you can connect this to Bluetooth and you can charge, uh, you can control all of your, your charging stuff with that. And it comes with a couple of different adapters as well. This one here has got some eyelets on it for connection directly onto the battery, but there's also alligator clips as well that you can get for those. Now, speaking of Victron, a lot of the time, I'll also be running some of my microwave stuff. The amplifiers and things will be running off 28 volts. Now, in a couple of my designs that I've done, I haven't really gone and powered those separately using, say, DC to DC converters or something like that, which is one option. So I could run everything off 12 volts and then use DC to DC converters in all of my transverters and projects. So what I decided to do was get a separate DC to DC converter. This one here converts 12 volts up to 24 volts. So a lot of my amplifiers, my 1.2 gig 50 watt amplifier uses 24 volts or 20, I think it's 28 volts. And there's a few others uh, that also use the same voltage. So then what I can do is I can run this off my 12 volt battery, run the output to all of my devices that require 24 volts. This one is isolated as well. So the input and output is completely isolated from one another. And I use that and it works very well. This model is an Orion TR1224. Now we move on to when I need to power my mains devices or charge my phones, my laptop, my other devices. I use this a lot when camping and also, yeah, when I'm running field days and stuff like that. This is the EcoFlow Delta two and you may have seen i've done a review a full review on this and i'll put a link up in the cards if you want to see that this thing is great you've got usb outputs on the front for your phones uh, laptop 
all that sort of stuff. Um, you've got a digital display here on the front, which gives you the percentage, how long's left, um, input and output, everything that you need. It also connects to Bluetooth on your phone so you can control it. On the back, it's also got four outputs for your main stuff. So it's got a sine wave inverter. It's got your 12 volts out on the back with, via a DC plug if you wanna be powering your stuff for uh, your automotive stuff. And it's also got some DC jacks here as well for powering smaller items. That's only up to sort of three amps. Um, under this flap too, you can also charge it from mains, but you've also got a DC in as well for your solar panels and also charging it from the car. The only thing it doesn't have is Anderson power pole output, which is a little bit annoying, but you can still work around it and, and uh, use like a power supply or something like that. I usually, use this as an alternative to a generator. So one of the, I don't have a generator, one of the, uh, the great t tested tried generators is a Honda EU10 and I've actually been looking at maybe getting something like that or an EU20 for powering stuff all day, uh, you get plenty of power. But for the slightly lower power consumption stuff, I use the EcoFlow because it doesn't generate as much noise as the generator does. Um, doesn't require fuel and all that sort of stuff. But it might be a little bit RF noisy on some frequencies. So you might need to move it away, which you usually do with a generator anyway, from your main operating area uh, on an extension lead just to get the noise away. But this works really well. Now, I also have a foldable solar panel. So I'd only really use this for when I'm operating POTA or when I'm camping or something like that. This is a Powertech six grid solar panel. So I just lay this on the ground on the car and this just charges the batteries when I'm, uh, when, when the sun's shining, um, when I'm off grid. So that folds up into this small little carry case. Um, it's got its own power supply, uh, sorry, its own solar charger in here. I've also got the Jackery. This is only a little 100 watt panel though, um, but it is a lot light, lighter weight, smaller output power, um, so you won't charge things as quick. Uh, this, is with, this is the Jackery Solar Saga 100, which, yeah, it's a lot smaller, but it is pretty compact and I really like it. It's got these stands as well that you can then angle it up towards the sun to get the maximum amount of power output out of it too. So that's pretty much what I use to power everything when I'm portable doing ham radio. If you wanna see some of those portable activations and when I've used all of this stuff in the field, then I'll put up some videos over here that you can view. If you want some more information on anything that I mentioned in this video, there will be links in the description below.